Last Wednesday, I stood up here and talked about how we, fortunate we were through the grace of God that we didn't have any deputies that were killed when they responded to a, a fake 911 call. And after they determined the call was a false call, they were greeted by gunfire. Our investigation since then has revealed just how lucky and how God put his shield of armor around these three deputies uh, that responded. Uh, very disturbing what we've discovered in our investigation, and I think it's very important that we talk about it today so our citizens can just see the danger that our deputies face every single day. Uh, not too long ago, um, one of our county council persons told me that our deputies are no different than any other county employees, and I'm going to have to beg to say that's totally wrong. I don't know many... Um, employees of Richland County that when they get up and they go to work and go to their profession um, face the danger that our deputies do. Our deputies are in a dangerous situation and I think this case really proves it. We're going to play the um, 911 call. There was two calls. We're going to play the short version. The second version is basically the same information so you can hear what, it, what our deputies were responding to. 911, what's your emergency? That was the first call. Immediately after that, there was a second call that gave us really the same information. Um, this was the this was the call that these three deputies were responding to. These are the three deputies, and I put their pictures up today because I want everybody to see. Just not hear a name of a deputy, but understand these are human beings. These are somebody's dad, somebody's son. Um, someone's loved one. These are the deputies that are out here protecting the citizens of Richland County. These three were the ones who responded that morning. Deputy Joseph Shannon House, Master Deputy Jansen Bell, Deputy William Bell. These were the three deputies that responded as a result of that call, thinking they were going to a call where someone was in danger, a female was being beat, so that's what they responded to. Now, their response was in relationship to the training that they received. Uh, they, their response on how they approached the house and what they did was very tactful and very thoughtful and probably could probably part of what saved their lives because they just didn't rush to a house. Uh, the bad guy, the guy who made the call, which is Fred Westfall, the two 911 calls are traced back to his phone, so we know he made the call. Uh, he had a plan. And he had a plan in place. And I'm going to show you that plan because he drew it out. He drew out exactly what he was going to do and how he was going to do it. But these deputies and the way they responded messed up his plan. And what he was attempting to do didn't happen because of the way the deputies responded. Um, they responded to the house, found out that nobody had called from that house, that it was a false call. They're going back to the car. Deputy Shannon House is in his car, and as he pulls, goes to pull away, that's when he's met with gunfire. Sixteen rounds were fired at him. One round hit his car, shattered the driver's window, a uh, passenger window, went into the dashboard. Other rounds went into a house across the street. Another round went into a vehicle. But 16 times, Westfall fired at our deputy. Our deputy, again, used the maneuver that he's been trained to do, and that's get out of the kill zone very quickly. And he did remove himself from that kill zone very fast. Again, that disrupted the plan that Westfall had put in place. Uh, after he shot at our deputies at the bottom of the steps of the house that he was at, which is his home, his mom and stepdad were inside the house. Uh, he walked a few feet in front of his garage and he shot himself in the head. 
he committed suicide. The coroner's ruled that he committed suicide. And that's why our deputies uh, found him. Now, how he was armed and equipped is what I want to show next. This was the rifle that he had. Now, the magazine has been removed from it, so this is just a gun. This is a red dot that he has on it, and this is also a scope that he had on it. And, and this is a light that he's equipped with. This gun was equipped with just about everything that you could put on it to use to assault, to carry out an assault. That's a handle that you have so you can control the gun when you're shooting it. Now, he had a magazine in the gun. It was a drum magazine. Next one, Sarah. This is what he was wearing. This is the vest, and this had steel plates in it, which is a uh, ballistic vest, basically a bulletproof vest. This was the magazine holders that he had. He had magazines in each one of these. He had another belt on him that had other magazines on him. He had 13 fully loaded magazines on his person. Each one of those magazines contained 30 rounds. He had 470 unfired rounds that he had on him. The drum on the gun was 70 round capacity drums. That was 41 unfired rounds on that. That's how many rounds he found. When we searched his bedroom, found additional tactical vests with more magazines. He had over 900 bullets that he was going to use on our deputies that day. These are the magazines. He had a radio on him. Every one of these magazines were fully loaded. They've been unloaded and shown in this picture, but they were loaded. What his intent was, was to kill as many Richmond County deputies as he could. How do we know that? This is his drawing that we found in his bedroom. FP, each one of these FPs is for firing point. That was locations that he was tactively going to fire from. You can see where he was talking about changes them as necessary, but this, is a, this drawing is his house. From his mom's bedroom, his bedroom, living room, kitchen, front porch, garage, these are different firing points that he established. He also marked the trees. He had trees marked. So his field of fire, he would know exactly where he could fire. But again, our deputies messed that up. He was not able to get a shot at them at the house next door. He was not able to get a shot at them from where he was at because he couldn't see them good enough to be able to fire. So that's when he came, we believe he came down the porch and as Deputy Shannon House went to drive off, that's when he started shooting at him. I don't know really how to describe this any more than this was an ambush and an attack on law enforcement. How do we know what he wanted to do? Go back one more. Dead pigs. I think that says exactly what his intent was, was to kill police officers. Dead p pigs is a derogatory term to call police officers. And that's what he had written on there was dead pigs. Westfall, this is his picture. Why, we'll never know. He had no criminal record. He had no uh, interactions with law enforcement whatsoever. Uh, we don't know why um, he wanted to kill deputy sheriffs from Richland County. We probably will never know. We do know, though, that that's what his intent was. Because he drew it out and he set it. And he carried out a plan, but his plan didn't work. So I want to thank everybody in the community that sent emails and text messages and phone calls and letters to the Sheriff's Department, um, just praying for the uh, safety of all of our deputies. Again, I believe in the power of prayer, and I think we saw, saw that last Wednesday morning, just how prayer and preparation by us and our training saved us three deputies that you saw up here just a minute ago. That's what saved them, and the grace of God saved them. Questions?
Well, are mom and dad or the stepdad involved at all? None whatsoever. Um, they had no clue what he was doing. They knew he was ordering um, a rifle. He'd ordered a, bought a rifle and actually been to a range and practiced on that. Knew he was buying ammunition and um, military style equipment. Um, his response to them was he was trying to go to Ukraine and fight. And he was also trying to get equipment for, um, for Ukrainian soldiers. That's what, that's what they thought he was doing. Why, again, they had no idea, but they were in the house sleeping when he carried this out. Do we know if he was a veteran in the military, had any association? None whatsoever. He tried to join the military and did not qualify, so he was no military training. He was self-trained, going to the range of self uh, and, and practicing, just in, in ordering lots of ammunition tactical vest, other stuff that could be used. Do we know anything about his school history or what schools he attended or if any problems occurred while he was there? Not that we know of. We know he did not finish high school. He did not even have a GED, and that was one of the things that prevented him from uh, qualifying to go into the military. Is he from the area, though? Did he go up around here? But I don't know all of that right now, but um, he was from here as far as we know. Um, I just don't know why. Do no we know clue. If, um, he was any kind of mental health, any medical uh, history on him at all? Don't have any indication of that at all. He's not on any list anywhere that he's been receiving treatment. Do we know if he was radicalized online or anything to that effect? He was communicating with various people online. I don't know if this is right. I don't know how you can describe this if this is radicalization or not. This is just pure evil wanting to kill cops. Um, what we found online doesn't have anything to do or say with about trying to kill cops. Uh, there's lots of communications about uh, getting equipment for Ukraine, um, trying to get to Ukraine, communication with people about Ukraine, but nothing about shooting cops. That, that's, I think, what makes this so odd is that you see him trying to do one thing and then he does something completely different. And, you know, his plan showed by that map was to kill the cops when we responded. He made two false 911 calls to get the deputies out there, and he made a type of call that he knew multiple deputies would respond. He didn't make a call that somebody's bicycle would be getting stolen or maybe one deputy would respond. He made a 911 call where somebody's life was in danger. I guess he knew enough that multiple deputies would respond, so that's multiple targets for him. And then he knew that more deputies would respond, and that's why he had different firing points. Now, that's kind of what the military deals, does. You have different firing points. You don't stay at the same, same place. And he had done that. He'd evidently practiced throughout his house establishing those firing points where he would know where his field of fire would be, where his kill zone would be. That's what he was establishing. I mean, he put all that down, and we, fu we found it. It's still the case there are no prior run-ins with RCSD, correct? No, none whatsoever with us. And no reason to believe that he was chatting with anyone else about his plan to do any day? No, we've checked all of his electronic devices, and there's communications, but nothing about this whatsoever. How long do you think he has been planning? I don't know. I don't think this has a date on it, so we don't know when he wrote that. We don't know. Um, again, there's nothing to indicate that this was a plan that he had. This was found in his room later, but there's nothing that he was communicating with anybody in chat rooms or anything else that says, I got a plan to kill deputy sheriffs. I'm going to kill cops today. I'm going to I'm going to death to pigs. I'm going to kill pigs. That was not on anything that we've been able to discover. Were you able to speak to any other residents that may be neighboring to that home that they said they've seen anything odd or to watch out for? No, they scared to death. I mean, they were in the middle of a, a war zone that morning. And you had 16 rounds that were fired at our car and then one round that he took his life with. And you know, two rounds were already found in somebody else's house, one struck a car. So. Everybody that was in that neighborhood was in danger with that high-powered rifle that he was shooting. 
were lucky again that nobody innocent person didn't get hit while they were in bed or getting up and getting a cup of coffee. They could have been just shot, just like um, he was trying to shoot our deputies. He didn't care. Didn't care. All right, thank you all.